Hey guys, how's it going? And welcome to this second part of the tutorial on how to create a C++ program for God serial method. Now, we have to pause the previous tutorial because of some time constraints and it was getting way too long. So I had to, you know, pause the, that video and continue with this video. So anyway, so in the previous tutorial, we covered the algorithm for the cost serial iterative method. And I told you guys that in this video, we will be covering the flowchart and the program. So let's get to it. So the flowchart is also pretty similar to the algorithm. You ask the user to enter the number of equations and store that in the variable called n. Then you create a, uh, an augmented matrix of size n cross n plus one. And you know, these are the loops to input the uh, elements for the augmented matrix. And then basically we ask the user to enter the initial values of the initial guesses for the values of the unknowns like x0, x1, x2, etc. And this is the loop to, to do that. And we found the user to enter the degree of accuracy and so on. We keep on you know, just basically it, it is just the environment. So I guess I will skip that as it is quite redundant. You might want to go through it so you can pause the video and have a look at it or maybe download the file that I have attached to the description of this video. All right, so now coming to the program. So this is the program for the cost serial iterative method. In the beginning, just, in, you know, include some of the basic header files that you will be requiring. Then um, in the main function, these two lines are for setting the precision of the output so that um, basically what these lines are doing is it makes sure that, you know, the output contains only four digits after the decimal point. So whenever a number is displayed, it will only show up to four digits after the decimal point. So these two lines ensure that. Then I have declared some of the various variables and defined flag and count. Then we prompt the user to enter the number of equations. Then we enter that in, uh, and store that thing in N. Then we create an augmented matrix of the size N cross N plus one and we call the matrix A. Then we create a matrix X of size N where we will be storing the values for the variables slash nodes. Then we declare two variables epsilon and y where epsilon would be for the degree of accuracy and y would be you know the variable y that I showed in the algorithm out with which we will be comparing the previous value the value of the unknown from the previous iteration and we will be comparing that with the current or the newer value of the unknown so we will store the previous value of the unknown at every iteration in y so that is why is, why is there all right, so then we found the user to enter the elements of the augmented matrix and we create a loop for that. We found the user to enter the matrix row wise. So um, this loop, uh, you know, inputs the matrix elements row wise. Then we found the user to enter the initial values for the variables or initial guesses. And then we create a loop to do that and we store the initial guesses in a, in a matrix called X. Then we, you know, create uh, or we rather we found the user to enter the accuracy of to which um, the solution should be correct, and we store that in a variable called EPS. Accuracy can also be denoted by the tolerance limit or whatever you want to call it. All right, so then this is the code for the privatization. So you start the loop with and take i from zero to n minus one, then you take k from i plus 1 to n and then you compare the diagonal element that is ai i you compare them with you know a k i and if um it is less than the element the element below it in the same column then what you do is you swap those things and this is the code for swapping so basically you make sure that the diagonal element in each column is the you know largest in that column so that your matrix is diagonally dominant and you can perform God serial iterative method on the matrix. So this is the code for that. And
And um, in the previous tutorial, I told you guys that we should have this AI term and AKI term as, you know, we should be using their magnitude and not their actual value. So we should be using their absolute value. So I guess I'm going to, you know, use the magnitude right here, which I haven't done already. So let me just go ahead and do that. So basically adding the EVS command makes sure that we are using the absolute value or whatever is there inside the bracket. So we will be using the absolute value of the element and we are comparing the absolute values because that is what is needed to enter the you know matrix diagonally dominant. All right. Then what we do is we have some formatting instructions like printing the iteration, then more formatting instructions, which is basically if I show you the output of the program, uh, these instructions are to, you know, print this instruction is to print iter and x, and then uh, there is a loop where I will be printing h0, x1, x2. So basically, what we are doing is we will, you know, um, let me just go through this output, the sample output. So we found the user to enter the number of equations and we have the user into the element of the augmented matrix flow wise and I've done that. Then we found the user to enter the initial values of the variables which I showed you as how and the user enters the initial values as 0, 0, 0. And then you prompt the user to enter the accuracy and user enters 0 0.001. So then what we are doing is we are privatizing the matrix, partially privatizing the matrix and making it diagonally dominant. And then we are printing iter, that is to keep track to, that is basically the heading of the iteration column. Then we print x0, x1, x2, that is the value of the variables x0, x1, x2. Right, so these are the unknowns that we need to find, and the program will print the value of x0, x1, x2 at each iteration. So, starting with the initial guess of 0, 0, 0, the program you know prints the value of x0, x1, x2 at the first iteration, then the second iteration, and as these values begin to converge, um, and once they converge, the program will print the output. So, let's come to the part where the calculation will be performed to find out the values of the you know, each and every unknown. So basically this part is the Gaussian method part. So what we do is we first of all print out the iteration. So using the count variable that we declared earlier and it started from uh, the variable was, was declared or defined to be zero. So we print count plus one. And then what we do, and we have a do, um, sorry, we have a do loop here. So make sure that you notice that so we have a new loop, so it will be, you know, this loop will be run at least once throughout the course of the program. All right, so then what we do is we create another loop where i goes from 0 to n minus 1, and where we make y equal to the xi. Basically, it is to store the previous value of, you know, the unknown in y so that we can compare it later on whether the difference between the newer value and previous value is greater or less than the desired accuracy, right? So then what we do is we make xi equal to the element in the last column of the matrix A. A is the augmented matrix and N denotes that we are accessing the last column. So basically we are making xi equal to the element in the last column in the same row as xi. Then we make uh, we start a loop where j goes from 0 to n minus 1 and if j is not equal to i we you know make xi equal to the pre well, previous value of xi minus the coefficient of xj this is the coefficient of xj and we will multiply that by the value of xj so this would be a new value of xi and basically what uh, this code is doing, I explained it a way better, in a better way in the previous tutorial where I showed you guys using a matrix that what this code is actually doing. So that was a little bit easy, <coughs> excuse me, that was a little bit easier to grasp. 
So I guess in, if you if you know if you are watching this video and you haven't watched the previous video, I guess you might wanna check that out. All right. So finally, when you know this loop is finally over, then what we do is we make x i equal to x and the newer value of x i that we have calculated divided by its own coefficient. So that would be the final value of x i up in the i s i iteration. Then we check whether this new value of x i is you know uh, we I find out the difference between this new value of x i and the previous value that is stored in y and if we check whether it is greater or equal to the desired accuracy and if it is within the desired accuracy range then we implement a variable flag and we declare flag to be zero so we make flag equal to one and then we finally print this value of xi in the ifi equation and then this loop uh, for i terminates and then we you know go to the next line to print out the next iteration and um, we increment count and we you know um, we keep this loop going on until we have reached the point where flag is equal to n minus one right so flag you know what we want is we want all the unknowns to be within the desired accuracy so whenever an unknown is you know reaches the desired accuracy we increment flag so when all the nodes have reached the desired accuracy flag would be equal to n so we will keep this loop going on until we reach flag equals to n right so um, let me just make this change in the comment all right so then finally we print the solution once we have reached you know flag equal to n minus one limit and we print that so that is what uh, we got the solution is as follows so let me just run the program once again in front of you so that you guys don't think it is, uh, you know, you don't have any doubt about this working or not. So let me just compile it first of all and then run it. Okay, so the number of equations would be three and I will be using the same example that I used in the, you know, last video to um, demonstrate the, or explain the bot serial procedure so I will be using the same matrix or the same set of linear equations. Alright, so this is my augmented matrix and then let's say I want the initial guesses to be like 0, 0, 0 because I don't know what uh, I have no idea regarding them. So then I want a pretty accurate result, so I will choose a uh, higher accuracy like 0 0.0001. Okay, so after seven iterations, you can see that after seven iterations, um, I'm getting the answer to two. And since I made the you know precision of my program as four, so you are only able to see four digits after each after the decimal point because of uh, you know this line over here. I should maybe increase that so that you can see the changes a little better. But anyway, so since we are only able to see four decimal points, so um, you don't understand that what's the difference between these two values, but pro well, probably there was some difference in them in you know in the next term. All right, so whenever the you know the result converges, like whenever the previous value of xi is equal to this. Uh, is not uh, you know very different from the newer value of xi and that would be depend on the desired accuracy that we enter so whenever we reach that stage the flag would be incremented and we will you know um, the, uh, once the flag has been implemented for all the unknowns then finally the loop and the program will come out of the loop and the solution will be printed so that's how the program works i hope you followed the video and I did not confuse you a lot and I hope that I was able to help you guys right. So thanks for watching and have a great day. And if you like the video, maybe you can hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. Well, that's it.